In the first part of today's lesson we're going to talk about the extraction of copper. What I want you to do to start with is think about what copper is used for and also what important properties co copper has that makes it useful. Please pause the video while you think about the answer to those two questions. Copper's main uses are for electrical wiring and hot water pipes, but it's also used in coinage metal as well. The properties it has that make it particularly useful are that it is a transition metal, so it's quite unreactive, so it does not corrode. It's a very good conductor of electricity and it's also malleable and ductile. Problem we have though, that there are only a few remaining ores that are of good quality. In other words, contain a lot of copper. Um, most of the ores now left are low grade. In other words, they only contain a small percentage of copper in amongst all the other stuff, all the other bits and pieces of rock. So our problem is, how do we actually extract copper? New methods are needed to actually get the copper ores, uh, copper metal from these low grade ores. One such technique we use, and you can read this as well as I can, is known as phyto mining. This involves extracting copper from soil. And the soil obviously has to contain copper compounds. Some plants are particularly good at absorbing copper compounds through their roots. And in fact, if we were still in school, you'd be doing a practical where you were extracting copper from red cabbage. The plants can be grown anywhere there's land containing copper compounds. They're then burned, leaving an ash, and that ash is rich in copper compounds. The, you'd have been using red cabbage ash and extracting copper from it. The copper can then be extracted from the ash, or in fact can be extracted from low grade ores using a technique called leaching or bio leaching. We'll talk a little bit later about other ways in which copper can be extracted from the ash, which basically just involve adding acid to get the copper compounds to dissolve. Bio leaching uses bacteria, whereas leaching uses an acid and the acid produces a solution containing soluble copper compounds and that's called a leachate, that solution. The problem we have is how do we get copper from solutions? Now there are two ways in which you can do this that you've already come across. You can use electrolysis and if you go back and have a look at the electrolysis topic you can see that if you electrolyze a solution like copper sulfate the copper collects at the cathode, the copper ion Cu2 plus gain two electrons to form a copper coating on the cathode. You can also use a displacement reaction. Often scrap iron or scrap steel is used because the iron is more reactive than the copper so will displace copper from its solutions. Okay, I want you to go back and look at the chemical changes topic and you should be able to explain how the electrolysis works and the displacement works. Maybe use your notes or maybe use your revision guide just to help you. But I'd like to see you write an equation for the electrolysis part and I'd like you to try and work out an, an ionic equation for what happens when you add iron to copper sulfate, for instance. Pause the video now while you work that, that stuff out. During the electrolysis, any copper ions in the solution are reduced. They gain electrons. So Cu2 plus plus 2E minus goes to Cu, and that Cu is plated on the, copper, on, on the uh, graphite cathode. For displacement, if you take iron plus copper sulfate, you get copper plus iron sulfate. So the symbol equation for that would be Fe plus CuSO4 going to, well, you can complete the rest easy enough. But what about the ionic equation? Well, you start with 
copper ions, Cu2+, from the solution. They'd be Cu2 plus Aq. Add Fe, which is just a solid, so FeS, goes to Fe2 plus aqueous plus Cu. Okay, electrons have been transferred during this reaction. It is a redox reaction. Again, check back at the previous work you've done on this to see or remind yourself what that's all about. The second part of the lesson you need to concentrate on other materials that we use. And what I want you to do is some research here. And BBC Bite Size is just about perfect for this. What you need to do is outline how each one is made, give some examples of each, key properties and some uses. BBC Bite Size, as I said, is perfect. You can also test yourself as you go through because there are little exam questions and other bits and pieces within the Bite Size package that you can have a look at. You need to search for AQA, Single Science, and then using Earth's resources, and that should take you to a topic index, and then obviously you look at materials. There's a worksheet for you to complete that I will share and put on Google Classroom. All you need to do is obviously do this briefly outline and then complete the little worksheet, please.